In the past, I've predicted fights using UFC 5, and some of the results were insane. It got Duplessis versus Strickland right. Walker versus Ankalaev was the exact same result with only a 10 second difference. And the craziest was Poirier's recent win only being 30 seconds off in time, but the way it played out was identical. Yeah, pretty spooky stuff here, lads. So with UFC 300 coming up, it's a perfect time to put UFC 5 to the test again. If you watch this before the fights, we'll get our predictions in. And if you're watching this after, did it get any of the results right, or is it just the complete opposite? <laughs> the first fight started with Figgy smashing Cody's glass chin. Cody Garbrandt fans are shaking right now, but Figgy made one mistake. He kicked Cody in the Garbrandt, and, and Cody wasn't having it, putting the pace on and dropping him twice. A lesson for Figgy here, don't kick Cody in the Garbrandt. Figgy resorted to elbow spamming, and I mean the game is the game, and this gave him momentum to start rocking Cody again, but out of nowhere, Cody uppercuts Figgy, sitting him on his arse for like the 27th time in this fight by now, and that would be the theme for the rest of this fight. Cody welcoming Figgy's chin the bantamweight in a very, well, violent way. Now, throughout this simulation, I'm actually going to keep track of my predictions. So, I'm 0-1 so far. Uh, I predicted Figgy by KO, so... Uh... Next up was Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. I've predicted Bobby Green by decision. I think both guys will be cautious, but Bobby will edge the win out. And of course, these guys heard my prediction and decided to just go to war. Both guys showed off their clean boxing and with the amount of action that was going on here, someone had to break. Like Jim Miller's leg. Yeah, the oblique kick here was brutal. Jim Miller's movement was now, well, kind of gone to shit. So Bobby Green turned Jim Miller into a punching bag. Also, he had to kick him in the leg again. Poor Jim Miller. Like, hey, come on, Bobby Green. You can't do Jim Miller like this. Oh, he kicked him in the head. Oh, he, he's knocked him out. He's out cold. Oh, I mean, I do get the point for this because uh, I did put Bobby Green. If I get the fighter right, I get the point. It's my video, okay? Speaking of videos, these take a lot of effort to make and we're aiming for 100k subs by the end of the year. So if you want to be a part of the journey, it takes two seconds to subscribe and I appreciate it, lads. And uh, yeah, we have Jalen Turner versus Moicano now. I backed Turner for this one and he agreed with me because he instantly rocked Moicano with this like double uppercut. He would then not just kick him in the head once, not twice. Three times he kicked poor Moicano in the head. And then he finished the fight with an elbow in round two. We've only had KO so far. Apparently UFC 300 is going to be wild according to UFC 5. That's also another point on the board here. I'm doing really well. Also, real quick, I do skip a few fights in the event. Either because it's a Holly Holm fight or because they're not in the game. So yeah, we do skip some fights if you're wondering. And now for a big one. Former bantamweight champ and arguably the GOAT of the bantamweight weight class. We have Aljamain Sterling and also to the guy that's writing an essay on why Aljamain Sterling is in the bantamweight GOAT. Uh, don't bother because, uh, lad, I'm not, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a f Sterling has a tough introduction to featherweight here though with Calvin Cater, who instantly bitch slapped him using his length to his advantage. And yeah, you know what I mean. This fight was close with both men going back and forth. Cater would slowly edge the fight, tripping Sterling on his arse and putting some wombo combos together. I don't know why I just said wombo combos. But out of fucking nowhere, Sterling turned into Prime Barboza, stunning the shit out of Cater. He probably shouldn't have worn white shorts. Sterling started styling on him with even more wheel kicks, but eventually got caught by Calvin at the end of the second. So going into the third and final round, this was literally any anyone's fight. Sterling slapped him in the face instantly, which Cater just didn't take lightly, answering straight away and nearly taking Sterling's per head off. This uppercut would just completely change the fight, as Cater started bullying him and ultimately knocking him out cold with just one minute left on the clock. I back Cater for this one, so give him a goddamn points. I think Cater does win in real life, though. I, I don't know what it is. I think Sterling's gonna have a tough time taking him down. Cause I'm coming on your ass, boy. Yiri would then be back in action against Rakic or Rakic or I don't know how the fuck to say his name, who's actually the favorite right now, which has surprised me. I know Oh, he's good like but come on lads it's yiri yeah have you just forgot about how good yiri is so i backed yiri for this one of course and because i'm fucking mystic mac i predict these things sorry i can't do conor mcgregor but i'm a fucking genius yiri would piece up rakic and see out the decision finally not a ko for once i thought this was just gonna be all ko's at this point but finally a decision i mean if it is all knockouts in real life we take that that would be fucking insane now moving on to the bronx the man the myth the fucking legend. He's taking on Sarukyan, and uh, this is anyone's fight. I'm back in the Bronx for this one, but let's see who UFC 5 thinks will win this fight. Oh, straight into the action. Okay, I'm liking this. Come on, the Bronx. The Bronx. There you go. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, no, you need it. You're, you're leaving your chin open too much, lad. Come on. Oh, he hits him with a front kick. Oh, that's not nice. Oh, oh, swanging and banging, boys. What was that? What was that? Charles Oliver, you have to punch him to win. There you go. He's listening to me. I'm his coach. Charlie Olives, come on, lad. No, why are you going for a body kick that close? Your ass is going to get slapped. What the fuck are you doing? Why are you going for a fly knee? Charles has a really bad cut in his face, but he doesn't give a fuck. He head kicks him. They, they really like punching nothing. Look, he's just punch. Oh, oh. 
Oh, Charles Oliver in trouble here. To the body. Sorry. Oh my god. That would have been lights out if he landed that. Oh. Oh no, Charles. Charles, no. Charles, no. Run. Oh, the flying knee. He drops him. Jump. Oh! Sarukin's in the Matrix here. What the fuck was that? that? The head movement there was insane. Oh! Oh! Oh, no! The Bronx, no! Oh, no! I predicted Charles Oliveira as well, so I don't get a point for that one. After Sarukin pulled off the upset, I very sadly didn't get any points, and it was time for the people's main event. Gaethje versus Holloway. Both guys are wild in UFC 5, so anything can happen here. I got Gaethje, but I want Max to win. I, I like both guys here, but um, yeah, I'm slightly rooting for Max Holloway. Max Holloway moving up to lightweight to challenge Gaethje for the BMF belt. The baddest motherfucker belt. Oh! Max Holloway's chin's already went instantly. Oh, he goes to the head kick. Oh, no. Oh, Max. Max, no. Holloway, you need to gas him out. You need to gas him out. That's how you win this. Go on, Max. Put the combos together. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Not round one. Not round one. Max Holloway. Run. Run, Max. Go on. Oh. Oh, my God. No way. No fucking way. What have I just watched? Okay, even doing this voiceover, I don't even know what the fuck happened here, lads. Every UFC fan, even Gaethje fans are crying right now. You literally... You, how, how could you do that to Max Holloway? Like, that makes me sick. You should be ashamed of yourself with your stupid BMF belt. I got one more point, though, so, um... Yeah, let's go. Anyways, Whaley versus... Zhao Nan? I, I, I should probably research how to say these people's names. We're gonna call her Zhao Nan, even if that's probably not how you say it. That is her name now. This is the co-main event, though, and I feel like this will be actually the only ever China versus China title fight we'll ever see. Unless Izzy fights some Chinese dude in the future, but, um, yeah, here we go. Now, I've got Whaley for this fight, of course, and uh, with the fight being five rounds, Whaley came out with some wrestling and ground and pound in round one, just trying to win the rounds. Boo! Kick her in the dick! She would do the same in round to and uh, there wasn't many people in the crowd. I think I, I think everyone kind of went for a shit at this rate. But then, in the name of Thug Rose Nama Yunus, Zhao Nan whacked out the head kick stunning Whaley. She also did a little twirl after because why the fuck not? But disrespecting Whaley like that can't happen. So eventually, with all the damage from the earlier rounds adding up, she started to pick apart Yan and um, I, I don't know how this real kick didn't kill her to be honest. Like, I, any, anyways, Whaley beat her up for the remainder of the fight, securing the decision and ultimately getting the ball at the end of the point. Let's go, lads. Come on. And finally, the main event of the evening, Hill versus Pereira. Now, I've got Pereira for this one. And let me tell you this. This fight was actually insane. So, yeah, here we go. Oh! 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 Oh, my God. He's beating him up. Nice head kick. Okay. Okay, Jamal Hill. Not out yet. Not out yet. Okay, sit someone as ours. Kicks him in the arse. Okay, he sat him on his arse. They kicked him in the arse. Jamal Hill, you all right there, buddy? Right, round two. Here we go. Goes to her front kick. Into a head kick. Jamal Hill has the stamina advantage right now. That could actually be really important in this fight. Unless you get punched in the face. You know, cardio is only important if you actually are not knocked out. Jamal Hill has a massive lump on his head. I'm not sure if that's a lump or actually just generally the size of his head. He's going to come after me on Twitter now because I said that. I'm sorry, Jamal. Don't beat me up, please. Oh, no, he lands the wheel kick. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Brutal knockdown. Jamal Hill still has the cardio advantage. This could play a factor in the later rounds. Thanks, John Anik. And then you just hear Joe Rogan. And the size of his leg. Look. He, oh my god. He's a monster. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh my god. Potan. Oh, but he counters. He rocks him back. Oh. Front kick down the middle for Jamal Hill. Alex Pereira, the cardio is getting him. He's really low. Head kick drops him. Jumps on him. He's gone for the finish this time. Oh, Bota Barrera is in trouble. This man, this man's a monster. Look, he's holding him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe Rogan. I'm sure you don't care. You have like 500 million probably in the bank. He needs to play safe. But he fly knees him. He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Oh, that hook is brutal. Potan, you need to just not throw a lot. I just get that one shot because you have such a bad cardio disadvantage. Oh, nice. Drops him. Oh my God, he's in jump. Oh my God. Yo, he's going to the body. He's up top now. Hits him in an elbow. Oh my god, wait, wait, hold on a second. Why is Pereira just a full-time wrestler now? Right, Hill's back up. Hill's back up. Nice leg kick. You need to kick the legs, Pereira. But he doesn't give a fuck. He overhands him. He blocked low thing and the leg kick was coming. And Pereira went up top and slapped him. And I, I predicted Pereira by KO. So, yeah. 
There's another point for me. And yeah, guys, this is what UFC 5 thinks is going to happen in UFC 300. For, I, I think it's a pretty good event. 